My name is Gail Spring and I'm the Adjunct Associate Professor of Scientific Photography at RMIT University in Melbourne, Australia. I've worked in forensic and biomedical photography for over 35 years and have encountered many imaging problems in that area. I'd like to share with you now a few tutorials and demonstrations addressing some of those issues that I've discovered. In this tutorial, we're going to look at uh, photographing and lighting shiny metal objects. Uh, and for this demonstration, uh, we've uh, chosen a subject that uh, uh, a lot of police have to photograph, which is simply a highly reflective knife. And, and in this case, I've chosen one with a, a, a black handle and a shiny blade to create a few lighting problems for us. We're going to look at how to set up the lighting and even how to set up the subject uh, in, the, in the field of view. Now, a quick explanation here is that if we have a, a, an object like a flat surface of a knife, it acts as a mirror. And as you know, if you look straight into a mirror, you're going to look straight back at yourself. If we get a little bit of an angle, we can then take a light source, light the object, and only the lighting reflected from the subject is going to end up in the camera, giving us a nice even illumination. What we have here is a very large light source, um, uh, much larger than the object itself to give us a nice uh, diffuse and an even illumination over the subject itself. More about that uh, in a minute. The other thing that we might want to do quickly is if we do have a mirror, for example, we can use this mirror to place on our, uh, on our tabletop uh, and be able to look through the camera and see that the, uh, the lighting is even and is in the proper place. So a mirror handy is not a bad thing to use. The other thing is, notice that I've elevated this slightly uh, using just a simple binder for a surface that now lets me have a bit of an angle towards it getting more perpendicular, not precisely perpendicular, but a little more perpendicular to the subject itself. I want to choose a neutral background. It doesn't have to be photographic gray, but it shouldn't be white, nor should it be black. A neutral color uh, and a mid-tone is, is perfect for this. So this is just background, gray background paper. We also then can place the, the subject itself on the paper like that, and without having to touch the object again, we can move it around by simply moving the paper. So I can align that in the camera, straightening it up horizontal to horizontal. I'll now want to place a scale into the, in the photograph as well. The proper placement of the scale should actually be at exactly the same uh, height as the object itself. And because this knife does have a few uh, millimeters of height, I've placed some blue tack on the back of the scale I can place that in the frame where I want it and now move both around at the same time. Again, I can center the knife. I have the illumination now evenly lit across the surface so I get no specular highlights. And remember, specular highlights by its definition means that there is no detail in there. If I move the light source itself, I actually do change the appearance of the object. And that gives me a fairly even illumination across the field. Now, once this is set up, lighting is correct. I choose my appropriate lens to cover the field. Last point is you should be using a lens shade so that you minimize or completely eliminate any reflection uh, that might come from the light source being so close to the lens. So using a lens shade is actually quite important. At this point, it's just a matter of framing, exposing, boom. Now we have the picture perfectly lit with all of the detail across the board. Last point I would like to make is you may not have a large soft box with an evenly illuminated surface. You may not have that. You can substitute this quite easily by using a simple piece of white card large piece of white card and illuminate not the subject but illuminate the card from the outside by I would suggest at least two lights evenly illuminating the card. 
it does the same effect as this large softbox. The point being that we're illuminating uh, a large surface area to illuminate evenly a large surface area without getting any specular highlights coming from a small, say, on-camera flash or a handheld flash.